Uh, Danny, you made your Premier League debut in November 2008. You were 17 years old. You're still here 16 years later as a top um, Premier League player. That's some achievement. Uh, given the sort of injury problems you had you know, back then, would you have backed yourself to play at, the prem play at this level for 16 years? Um, it was always the aim, like to play in the Prem as long as possible. Uh, I enjoy it. Grew up watching the Premier League and still got the same hunger, you know, to to keep keep on improving every single day. And yeah, I'm obviously really privileged uh, to be playing in the Premier League still, and it's an honour. And um, I'm looking forward to, to to it continuing. I think it'd be fair to call you a, an elder statesman at the club now, a senior player, a leader. What does that role mean to you? I think for me, um, yes, I'm one of the, the older players and I'm one of the boys that any of the lads can come and have a chat to, you know, can ask for advice. I'm always there open to giving uh, advice on like my past experiences, uh, not just for myself, but what I've seen at numerous different clubs and different situations that players have been through. And yeah, I've got a lot of experience within that. Um, and um, I'm always open with with each and every single player, staff member, you know. And yeah, I like I like the role that I'm in now, um, thriving in it, and looking forward to the season ahead. Because this is a club that you know places a high value on people of your seniority and experience, doesn't it? Do, do, do they do they make the, do they do they ask it of you, or do you give it yourself? Do you volunteer advice and, and leadership, or, or is it kind of almost in your contract to do that? Um, on behalf of the coaching staff. Yeah, well, they better pay me a bit more if it's in the contract. <laughs> 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 Leadership bonus, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, you'll have to have a word with, uh, <laughs> with the owners. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it's just like, I think as a person, like how you are as a character, how you behave um, on and off the pitch, you kind of just fall into the role. And, you know, there's been some great um, senior pros at the club that have um, played alongside here. Uh, a couple of them have, have left uh, this summer, which is really unfortunate. Some great players and great guys, and um, yeah, so maybe the, the responsibility falls a bit more heavier on on the remaining senior pros. But it's one that we take into we we they have open arms, you know. We take that role and we we thrive on thrive upon it. Just going back to the Premier League, Danny, obviously your longevity in it, I think you're probably best placed to describe how much it's grown since you've been involved in it. Can you see a big difference? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's so much attention to detail with tactics and how you're preparing for games, like within the week, the training sessions. Uh, I think if you go around to all the different clubs, training sessions from when I first started playing, uh, in the Premier League to now, I think there's so much more attention to detail. How are you going to prepare? How are you going to break down teams? How teams are going to play against you? Um, I think from then to now, it's a, it's a huge difference. Uh, that's internally, but what about externally? Like the, the media attention, the, the coverage it gets? Yeah, um, obviously the Premier League, it's always been like one of the most watched leagues in the world and now it's uh, it's still the same, it's the most watched and um, I think social media plays a huge part. So when I first started playing social media it was just uh, it was just Facebook, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just Facebook. Now there's there's all all the apps and all that going on and yeah, I think it it's massive like when I can look back at my time coming through the academy and then looking at it now like players coming through the academy now to to break it through to the first team like the amount of exposure that they've got it's it, it can be difficult to handle um, depends on the character how they take it then there might be different sort of egos players might think they're better than they are for example just because you've got maybe like a, a bigger following or something like that um, so it's 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 part and parcel of football these days. It's part and parcel of life. And you know, you've got to adapt, you've got to change and get with the way. So um, this, the exposure 
has definitely increased. Because, of course, at Manchester United, where you started, you were very protected when you saw Alex Ferguson made a big thing about protecting young players and keeping them out of the limelight and mm -hmm. keeping their profile down. I can remember asking for interviews with players at United and, and him saying, no, 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 <laughs> not until he's 25 or something. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a bit different for these lads, isn't it? As you say, they come in here now and they've got huge profiles already. And that takes a bit of managing, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. And I think in life, you know, you get you have to go through certain situations to, to develop the experience of, you know, handling different, um, maybe you're going through a, a down stage, uh, a down phase uh, or an up phase, you know, how, how you handle that is, is key to progressing as a player and as a person. So, um, yeah, you, you, there's not as much protection maybe like um, as back in the day, um, but I still think like the characteristics and your behaviour and your mentality is it's huge for you to progress at the level you want to get to. Is it fair to say you, you, you keep a fairly low profile in the sense that you don't, you're not on billboards all the time and is that, is that deliberate? Do you, do you just want to get on with the job and be left alone to do your work? Is that how you see it? Uh, I think from my upbringing, um, from my parents, so like very humble beginnings and you know growing up at Manchester United Academy and there was certain ways how you, how you had to act and behave and um, not just on the pitch, off the pitch and there were certain things like if you if you're not, I don't know like, <laughs> I don't want to throw people under the bus like but <laughs> I don't know there's certain players that will maybe be a bit more out there open and sometimes it's looked it's maybe frowned upon as like oh you're not really concentrating on on being the best you can be but as I said that's life and you adapt and you know um, certain players are really good at handling both on and off the pitch and I think for me I was always just focused on the football mm -hmm. and yeah that's how it's that's how I am as a person. W were those rules put into place after Bex? <laughs> well, Bex is his own person. Yeah. Hey, I think he's happy now, isn't he? He's, he's doing all right. Uh, ra rather than obviously, this is the Bright Enough Albion podcast, and rather than trail through your career because it's been long and it's been successful, do you just want to give us a few crucial moments in your career that you reflect back on positively, negatively, whatever, and then we'll get to the here and now? Yeah, you've. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that I can think about. Obviously, um, yeah, th this is really interesting to hear what like what what you would pick out from your career because obviously we can run through it yeah. and, and see what we would perceive as highlights or, or, or low points. But it's interesting to hear from you. Yeah, so I say like the changing of clubs is always like a it's a bit of a, um, a tricky situation because you're going to a different club, different culture, different environment. Um, obviously, I'd grown up at United uh, through the academy up from eight years of age. Then got into the first team, played, um, had some very successful moments there, and uh, loved it. And then, then there's a change of manager. Maybe that manager doesn't see you in the, um, see you playing in the first team as much. So, yeah, then you're looking at different clubs and. I got the chance to go to Arsenal, which was a, an amazing club, a uh, family oriented club. And then I uh, had some really difficult injuries there, which was very, very tough to take. You know, uh, you just want to be playing as a boy. You want to be playing out on the pitch and, you know, helping the teammates. And it's difficult to be on the sidelines and going through uh, long rehab processes and yeah, so I'd say that's the the negatives, um, the injury side of things, and then, um, but I also try and see the positive in that because uh, going through them situations like helped me, uh, built me into the the man that I am today, you know, and I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't change that because it's it's made me a lot stronger uh, as a person. Uh, mentally like you you just you go through so much but you know once you've come out on the other side you're like you can handle you can handle yeah. anything really and um, so with that it helps and say injuries yeah but 
going to new clubs, experiencing different cultures, different environments, and you know, trying to still trying to improve every single day in on the training pitch. And yeah, I was I was lucky to to come to Brighton with a great dressing room and you know, great club, great great environment, and yeah, to be thriving there, it's a uh, it's amazing. So was was that a big decision for you? So you you'd been at, at Arsenal, you you'd gone to Watford, and when Brighton came in for you, they were quite a new Premier League club. Was it one of those where you think, oh, I'm, I'm not sure because they are so new, or was it one of those where you just seen the place and thought, yeah, that 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 looks ideal for me? Yeah. So there was there was a few like options at that time, and I had looked at it and you know analysed the whole. All, all the options and I thought Brighton would be the, the best place for me to come and it's it's proved to be. Um, every single season has been better and better and better. Uh, obviously getting to Europe with, with Brighton was a, a huge step for the club and uh, I think everybody really enjoyed uh, the European tour. Um, it didn't end the way we wanted it to but uh, it's, it's given us that hunger and uh, the belief and you know the confidence to to go and do that again and that's uh that's definitely something that we'd like to achieve it's a good quick quiz question um which players have played for alex ferguson and arsene wenger i've, I've got i can only think of two so I've, you I've, and I've, I've asked him this question robin before, van persie's the other yeah. one i can think of could you I'll get me on the I've, I've got one more yeah, i've got one I think you know well. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Mikel yeah. Silvestro. Ah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So right, we've got three now. Yeah. But I suppose the the one thing those two managers would have in common would be an obsession with winning, wouldn't it? So yeah. you've you've pretty much always played in a winning culture. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, lucky enough to play under two uh, great managers under them, and both very different uh, in in finding their way to success mm -hmm. and. Um, but it just shows that there's more than one way to success and yeah, I've I enjoyed my time under both, playing under both of them and luckily I played under some more great managers too, which is, which is, uh, I've been lucky in that, in that sense. Because we had Adam Lallana on the show last season and he talked about, you know, when a club comes into the Premier League for a while, they're going to be happy to sit there and just, you know, consolidate and then sooner or later, the next step is to develop this this winning mentality to, to to want to win to need to win and that and he was saying that that had started to, that, to develop at Brighton with the European campaign and so on so d do you feel like you're in that sort of club now where it's not just about staying in the Premier League and getting young players it's, it's, it's about it's about achieving things and, and winning things 100 percent and uh, when I came to the club uh, Adam Lallana was here too and he was pivotal in those um in changing the mindset of you know of the players and the whole the whole club really you know to focus on right we've got we've got good players here but we're not we're not just here to play football like we're here to we're here to do our best and to win games and yeah i think it's it's gotten a lot more serious a lot a lot better uh going to every game now it's like we're here, we want to get the three points. Mm. We feel like we've got the, the quality within the squad uh, to achieve that. So why not go for it every single game? And that means going to Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool and, and trying to win the game, doesn't it? And believing you can win the game, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no game's different. And I think in the Premier League, every single game is going to be, it's going to be tough um, because people, everyone's prepared you know, throughout the week and tactically, physically and mentally, they're all going to be ready. So it's difficult, but we do the same and we try and do it better than anybody else. And, you know, uh, we try and we try and get them three points. Mm. I, th I think that is th the biggest change that I've seen is that w when you were newly promoted, it was, for want of a better term, acceptable to lose. You, you went to mm. your cities and your Liverpools and you would always try and win when you step foot on the field, but if you did lose, it was like, ah, oh, well, it was, it was one of those games where it's kind of acceptable to lose, but now I think you guys have come in and, and that's where the club's really transitioned and progressed, where you want to win and you believe you can win every single game, whether it's home yeah. or away. Definitely. I think uh, if we don't if we don't win, <laughs> everyone's disappointed, you know, wherever it may be. Uh, you mentioned like City, City away and stuff like that. We're, we're still disappointed because we know the way like we prepared and with the quality we have in the squad, we could still 
be winning them sort of matches, you know, getting some good results there. So, yeah, I think with that mindset, um, you're only going to improve, you're going to keep on getting better. Uh, you keep building the mindset, keep building the confidence and, yeah, it's a, we're in a good place at the moment. I think last season was difficult. Um, when we was playing two games a week, it was the first time the club have ever done it. So uh, I think we was uh, we had some. It was really unfortunate with injuries as well. So the squad was maybe a little bit light, and yeah, uh, it was difficult. But I think now we've uh, we've had uh, the summer break and we've prepared well for pre-season. This pre-season, like spent I a lot of money. Spent a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> spent a lot of money. Yeah, I think uh, everybody's uh, raring to go now. Can't wait for for the season to start. You talked about adapting to clubs. What about adapting to new managers? Because that's what you're doing at the moment. I wonder what the key is for a player when a new manager comes in. Is it to, is it to kind of keep an open mind, to listen, to forget everything that's happened and to start afresh? How do you approach a new manager starting? Listen, um, football is a cutthroat business, yeah, and it's like I've been, I've been lucky enough to I've been in a lot of situations where managers are left, managers have been sacked and you know, that sort of stuff. So to have that experience and knowing that a new manager is going to come in and how to approach that situation, you've kind of got to not forget what's happened in the past, like keep that within you because every single manager can bring, um, can make you better as a person, as a player, whether, whether it's positive or negative. And I try to let every everybody I know that I talk to, mm. let everybody know that. And you know, um, I always try to think of it like the grass. I don't know. Things things aren't always as good good as they seem, and things aren't always as bad as they seem. Mm. So like, if a manager leaves and you've had a great connection with him, then you never know what's round the corner. And that's that's sort of like the mindset that I try and portray like to to the rest of the lads, the younger lads, and you know keep an open mindset yeah. and be ready to go, be ready to learn, be ready, be open to new ideas, and this will only make you better as a as a player. Yeah. Going back to when you you signed for the club, Danny, I, I came across a stat that really shocked me. It jumped out at me. Uh, it was that you have made more Premier League appearances for Brighton right. than any other team yeah. and I think that's probably, it's obviously down to yourself looking after yourself but I think it's also a little tip of the cap to the medical team as well that they've, they've learned how to get you out on the field more yeah. often than not. Um, yeah, I, 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 that was just something that I thought, wow, really surprised me. Yeah. Um, Did you ever think that would be the case when you signed? No, <laughs> like, obviously you never know what the future holds so um, but as I said, like as going through them tough times with the injuries and stuff, you learn more and more about your body. You feel more confident, like in how you train and how you prepare yourself throughout the week, ready for the weekend. And I think, um, yeah, with the medical team, they they always uh, looked out and maybe said like, oh, maybe we might have to modify a little bit of training here uh, on a certain day. Um, but now I feel fit, strong, and I'm, I'm training pretty much every single day. So uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go for the new season. Didn't think the record appearances for each club would be at Brighton, but um, that's how it is. I want to keep on pushing that up further, even more. So uh, ready to go. What are the advantages of being 33 and as, ex as experienced as you are in the Premier League? Because Sometimes when you come on, you, you cause havoc very, very quickly. I mean, so do you, is it reading of the game, do you think, that, that gets better and better as you get older? You know, you come on the pitch and you see, you see the space, you see the gaps, you see where you can hurt teams. Yeah, definitely. I think experience is it's invaluable. Um, and what you learn, like, throughout the years and, like, how important, I don't know, maybe just, like, your body shape, like when you're receiving the ball and you know that sort of stuff, or your first touch, like if you're going to be taking it to the side, or if it's a, even a stud roll, just just little tricks that you learn. I think like once you, 
as you get older, if you're doing something for a number of years and you keep on getting better, you keep on, on you just, you develop little tricks like you understand so much and it's like you just see things way ahead of time. I remember when I was young coming through the, coming through at United and I'd be looking at some of the players I'm like, what? Like, these guys are like five, six steps ahead. Mm. And now I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the game. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know why. Like you just, it just comes like second, second nature to you. And it's mm. Is that how you remember your good. early thirties as a striker? Um, yeah, I'd probably made all my mistakes before this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely in front of goal, hundred yeah. percent. I think, I think in front of goal you settle down much more. Um, I think as a younger man, you would, uh, you would think. Only split. I'm talking split seconds, by the way. As that ball's arriving, you think I've scored, I've scored, I've scored. Oh no, I've fluffed it. I've put it in the stands. <laughs> but as a, as an older man, you don't you don't sort of get that. You're you're a bit cooler, you're a bit calmer, and you've been there so many times. I mean, mm-hmm. Danny, you, yeah. you, you just you just know how it goes, and yeah. that's the belief and and the confidence that you've got when you play in the Premier League for so long, like yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, there's been a quite an influx of um, young attacking players to this club in the last well few months, yeah. several over the summer. Um, could you could you tell me uh, how you see this attacking unit that the, that, this, that the club has now? And I wanted to ask you in particular about Jao Pedro because you could be a bit of a role model to him. Uh, do you see yourself a little bit in Jao Pedro at his age? Yeah, um, I know Jao like very well because I knew him before he came here. He was at Watford together, so yeah. I knew Jao from when he first came over from Brazil, and uh, straight away we bonded. Um, on and off the pitch and mm. I always thought uh, he's got a special talent that I knew from the moment I seen him in training at Watford and and he's uh, he's proving me he's proving me right in my head like I knew he's, he'll become a, a great player and I think he, it's the role's not finished um, for him he uh, he knows that he's hungry he's ready to he's eager to improve every single day he's got that you know um, that Brazilian blood where he's, he's a fighter, he's ready to, he, it doesn't matter who he's up against, he's ready to give that defender a tough, tough game and he's got some, he's got incredible feet mm-hmm. and uh, I think um, great head on his shoulders so once he, once he gets um, more games and more repetitions into, into his legs and into his body he's going to be, it's going to be some some player even yeah. better than he already I, is now. I, mu- I must admit, when I, when I play with you guys up at Watford, he was the one that just like you're like, wow, who yeah. is this kid? Just things he could do. Yeah. He, he was like, he was so good, and and like you, I I totally agree. I think there's a lot more growth in him. Yeah, loads more. He's got loads more to give. I mean, we've seen like glimpses last year and uh, of what he's capable, and he's, he's his his tally was impressive in the end. Mm-hmm. But I think he can get so much better. Yeah, definitely. I do think he can. He can make that next step up, you know. To I think he had he scored a lot of penalty goals last year. I think he could, he's got the ability to score the same amount of goals, but without the penalties, yeah. with the penalties on top. So, did you both recommend him? Sounds like you did. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I'll be honest. He was my first call back to Dan Ashworth. Was he? Yeah. yeah. I was literally getting on the train. I was like, "You've got to sign this." <laughs> right. Okay. Have you he, been, he, 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 was, he was that type of player where you just, you're just blown away by him. Have you uh, have you invoiced for that advice yet? No, not yet. That's that's pending. <laughs> <laughs> Might I, be too late. I'll wait until I get a transfer yeah. fee for him. <laughs> <laughs> the moment's passed. I think. You got a sell-on clause. <laughs> I'll take a percent. <laughs> <laughs> And what about what about the other young forward stroke strikers, Danny? What what, what can you tell us about them? <laughs> well, we've got a great group of um, attacking players at the yeah. club, and yeah, I think obviously Evan, he unfortunate, you know, with injury last season, and it was one of them where if when, once he gets his games, and this season I'm pretty sure he's going to be uh, just as lethal as he was when he when he came into the side, and he's a uh, predator in the box um, there's not many like him around he's, he's big strong but he's he's agile and lethal in the in the box and I'm looking forward to seeing him back on the pitch and obviously we've got um, a lot of new players yeah, that have come into the side yeah. and yeah I think with the wingers 
that we've got and um, Sally coming back too. Uh, we've got a lot of firepower and it's going to give the manager uh, a healthy headache, you know. He's going to have some decisions to make and but I think that's great for, it's, it's good for him. It's great for the squad, good competition and yeah, everybody's going to want to be making the best impact they can when they're on that pitch zone. Healthy competition. We, we, we talk about sort of you giving back and helping the young ones come through, but you, you're at that, that moment where to balance, isn't it? Because as well as helping them and drip feeding them information, you're also fending them off, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I don't, I don't really see it as, as like I'm fending them off. Like, um, I know that the quality is that all of these players have um, for them to be playing elite level in the Premier League, you know, you, you've got to you've got to be special, and each and every one is in their own way, and you know, um, and so am I. So <laughs> it's one of them where you just uh, you know you play, you train every single day. Uh, the competition's there. You want to be better. You want to be better as a player. You want to be better to help the other person be better. Like. The manager says it now, it's like being a great teammate is, it's not just um, being the best you can be, but it's like pushing your, yeah. your other teammates as well to be the best that they can be. So um, I think that's a great way to put it. We often ask our guests this, uh, what's your life like away from the club? Do you have any particular, I don't think I've ever seen you in Brighton Hove, but <laughs> you, you presume to have hobbies and you do stuff away from the game, you've got outside interests. Nah, do you know what, I'm boring. I've got, I've got, I've got no life. <laughs> really? I've got, got no life. I've got two kids, <laughs> oh, right, okay. two little girls and misses and you know, just go home, yeah. have some family time go to the beach sometimes. You, I don't see you at the beach, so. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, go Would to the beach. Would you go in that water? <laughs> <laughs> go to the beach, some good parks around, you know, just just, uh, just family time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, just preparing for training the next day. Just get yourself in the best uh, physical, physical way to, to train the next day or for the games. See, that's another legacy of Sir Alex. He liked, he liked players to get married and go home after training, didn't he? <laughs> go home to their family. <laughs> he, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> I, think he just, I think everyone just knew, like, I think you'll be not to be out well too to much. To <laughs> but it, it is, that, that is, as you, as you get older in the Premier League, that is part and parcel of it. You give, you've got to give almost even more to it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, when you're young, you can just, uh, you can just, do whatever you want and then be ready to go again and now I think for me I've, I, I still feel really good fit strong I still feel young to be honest and so do I but I'm not Danny <laughs> <laughs> it's, all in the mind. it's all in the mind isn't it? <laughs> the body says different um, but yeah I think I, I prepare well I make sure I'm, I'm good to go for training and yeah it's them little percentages just try and add them up and yeah, feeling good, feeling good up until now. Just finally, Danny, they used to say about you at Man United that you had this tremendous confidence and certainty and, in, and enthusiasm as well, but, but belief in yourself. And it sounds as if that belief has survived every setback and it's still with you now. Yeah, I think um, the setbacks, some people can take them in different ways and I take it as like, I remember there's been times where I had been out for nine months with an injury, came back, played a couple of months and I remember I was like feeling good, feeling strong at Arsenal and then I just get a, get a collision, get a knock off a, off a player and he's hit my knee. You go into a scanner and then the scanner's saying, this has happened, then you need surgery and it's just like flipping it, can't catch a break here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like flipping it, can't catch a break and you know, um, yeah, and then you you in the you, you do the surgery, and it's like obviously you yeah, you let your emotions out, just cry for a bit, and then it's like right, let's get to work, let's do this. It's like I'm on the, in the hospital bed, I'm like right, I'm ready to go. Mm. Like, what, what do I need to do to to get back? What people don't realise is <clears throat> it's obviously a team sport, but when you are injured, you're on your own, aren't you? Yeah. It's a lonely place. Yeah, it is. It is lonely. It's a dark, long, dark road. You know, back to 
back to getting on the pitch and I've been through that three times, four, four, four times and yeah, it's hard, it's hard. Um, maybe when it gets to like the third, fourth time, you're like, this is, it's too, like, why is it, why is it always happening to me? But you can't look at it like that. It's like, it's football, it's part and parcel of the game, right? This has happened. Um, dwelling on it and looking back, thinking, why why me? It's not going to help you. Yeah. So you've got to try and f remain positive, stay as strong as you can. Um, got a great network behind me, great family. Um, got two older brothers, my mum and dad, uh, my missus, and now with my two kids as well. Like, great network behind me and great friends as well who have been there, well, since high school, really, and we're still just so close knit and that's my network and like they're always there to support me in the good and bad times and I'm really appreciative of that. What's left? What 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 can this squad achieve? Af after Europe last year, <clears throat> can they go again? Can they get back and, and make more of an impact when they do get there? That's that's the that's the name. You know, I think having the taste of playing in Europe uh, at Brighton it's uh, I think everybody's kind of like well, you. You were one that had been there and, and and could guide the the majority that hadn't. Yeah, yeah, I'd been there and played in Europe and and really, I'd felt that and it's something like to to get there again. Um, you just want to keep on doing it. You want to keep on doing it, and that's that's the name. Like we want to, we want to be better than last season. Obviously, last season we was in Europe, so we wanted to get to Europe first and foremost, and then to be better than how we did in Europe. Nice. Brilliant. Thank you, Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Cheers.